Hi guys, welcome back to the Ask Me Mama. I'm Danny. So I know it's been a while and I apologize, but with holidays and all the evaluations we've been doing, I've gotten a little behind and so I'm hoping to catch up and update everyone on our journey, which I hope helps with your journey. So be sure to watch today's video. I'm going to talk about what we've been doing, what we found out, and all the new things that are happening. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Aspie Mama, where I provide practical advice for raising your child with autism. From one mama to another, don't forget to subscribe and join this mama tribe. Today, I wanna to talk about genetics and our journey. I know I did a video previously, but this is an update to the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video, I'll leave a link up below. Be sure to look, it should pop up right about here. And you can catch up on where we're at. Our genetic journey started in 2016. Um, my boys had just been diagnosed, both of them had just been diagnosed with autism. I think we'd had the diagnosis for about a year or so and the developmental doctor kept suggesting that we go and have them tested because I had two boys back to back within 13 months of each other and both of them wound up being diagnosed with autism so he felt that there was a strong genetic link in our family for the fact that my oldest two kids were born back to back and both had autism and they were both boys. So with all that being said, I finally gave in and decided, you know what, it can't hurt. Uh, let's just let's just go and see what happens. So we went to a genetic consultation in 2016 and we met with the genetic doctor. At that time, they told us that they like to do what is called a chromosomal microarray, also known as a CMA. And what that does is it looks through your, through your chromosomes and it looks for duplications and deletions in your code to see if there's anything that stands out. And then some of those um, duplications and deletions, they've already started to associate with different problems and disorders. So if it's something that they know is a known thing, then they can link it to certain disorders or developmental problems or other things. So when we went in 2016, we had that test done um, and it took a few months for them to do the research because it takes a long time for them to study it. So after a few months, we got the results. And by the time we got the results, I was pregnant with my fourth child. Um, so I have two boys and I have two girls. And so I was pregnant with my younger daughter. And the results came back that my boys did have a microduplication on their 16th chromosome and that specific microduplication had been linked to autism. So they felt like that was a strong suggestion that it was genetic, but they wanted to do further research and they wanted to test me and my girls and my husband and see who else had it and who else was presenting symptoms. Um, for whatever reason, we weren't able to follow up at that time and we just kind of got on with life and it kind of got put on the back burner. Fast forward to 2020 and I had another baby, um, my fifth baby, and my eldest daughter was having a lot of developmental problems. She has some social problems and we've suspected that she has autism for a long time. I think she's high functioning and I think she's presenting as a girl and she hasn't gotten diagnosed because they're looking for boy symptoms or very severe symptoms and the things that they point out. They're looking for the classical stereotypical things and she's not presenting that way. So we've had a hard time um, having her evaluated and recognized. And then my younger daughter has started showing a lot of classical symptoms of autism. And so we decided to have her evaluated, which you can watch that video here as well. If you wanna watch either of the girl's stories, I'll put the links up above. And anyways, at my younger daughter's evaluation, they basically said, look, she has all the classical signs and symptoms, yet she did too well on her psychological portion of the exam, meaning she was too communicative. And they felt like, very uncertain of if she was or if she wasn't because she had she did make eye contact and she did some things with them and so they put them on the fence about her but they said look if you can show that she has the same um genetic thing as her brothers then we'll consider it so 
that's what sent us back to the genetics clinic and i've been wondering for a long time like do my girls have it do they not just something i kind of wanted to know and then also having another boy you know is a high chance that he could because both of his brothers do so put all that together and that's what landed us back in the genetics clinic so when we arrived back this time i put in a request saying can we have the younger three kids tested for the micro duplication that my boys have and so she said let's set up an appointment and bring your eldest and i want to do a checkup on him and we'll talk about it so that's what we did i made the appointment to meet with her and i took my eldest son with me and we discussed like how he's doing and how he's developed since they saw him like three four years ago and um i explained to them you know he has height and weight issues and you know he's still showing a lot of classical signs and you know he's doing well but he's in a class for kids with autism that we tried to integrate him but that didn't go very well and that now he was just back in a regular class for kids with autism that could really support his needs and she basically told me at that point that she didn't want to do the chromosomal array test the cma because they didn't hold as highly by it as they used to in 2016 and since then they like to do an exome test where they test the exomes and they look for any genetic abnormalities again and they have certain ones that they know are linked with things and things that aren't but while they do that test they could come up with things for like heart disease or breast cancer or anything like that so they could find other things as well as a link to autism so she suggested she really wanted to do this testing the problem with this testing is it can be like 1200 to 1400 dollars it's very expensive however we were really lucky because where we lived they had a grant that if you'd had done the cma test before and came back with a result from the cma of a deletion or duplication then they would pay for one parent and two kids to be tested so we fell into that category so we applied she wanted to apply for the grant which she did and we got approved after a week and then once we got the approval it meant that they would pay for the testing of all three of us and she decided that she wanted to have me tested and my oldest two boys so she got approval for the test she had to submit paperwork to get the grant for the approval to pay for the exome testing and she got the approval within a week at which point then she messaged me and set up an appointment for me and the boys to come in to be tested. I went with both boys. It was a bit crazy. We wound up running kind of all over the hospital um, where the genetic clinic is. We went from, we, the genetic clinic is like on the fourth floor and they sent us down to the third floor for me to get my blood drawn then when we got there we found out that the boys had to go to a different area the pediatric ward to have their blood drawn which is in a different building on a different side and so we wound up going all over so this took a couple hours to get done plus they were like not so <laughs> they didn't uh, participate so well my eldest is really uh petrified of needles and it was a really scary um experience for him because he is like he's like really really afraid of any sort of shots or blood draws or anything and he really freaks out and it's really hard for him um it actually took three people to hold him down to get his blood because i had to hold him and then another nurse needed to hold his arm straight so he didn't move and then the third one had to draw the blood and so we had to do that and uh, thank God he calmed down really quickly afterwards and he was okay, but it's just always really a struggle to do blood draws with him and his brother. And so we got blood draws from both of them and we got my blood and we took it back to where we had to turn in all the blood samples for them to test it. And we were supposed to find out the results within two weeks. So lo and behold, to my surprise, they came back within a week and said they wanted to speak to me. But they didn't tell me anything, so I didn't know if we were getting good results, bad results, no results. Um, so I was a little panicked because I was like, what if they found something else? Because it wasn't just autism that could pop up in this testing. Uh, so I was nervous, like, are we going to find out something that we didn't know that we had a problem with and now we're going to have a new problem? Or will everything just be fine and there's going to be nothing? Or will they find something linking to autism again? The genetic doctor had told us originally when they do exome testing 
that there's a very low likelihood that they would find anything. It's more likely they wouldn't find something than that they would. And same thing when we did the chromosomal array and they found something with the chromosomal array. So I wasn't sure like what to expect with this testing. She called me on the phone and on the phone call she told me that they did find something in the exome testing. They found that we have a, another genetic variant on the fifth chromosome and it's called PDZD2 and it has been linked to autism and it was a more significant sized um, variant in the genetic code and so that's why they picked that's why they noticed it and then they saw that it had been linked to autism the problem with all of these things being linked to autism is there's not one specific genetic link to autism generally they test people with autism and they look for abnormalities within their genetic makeup but the problem with that is is they're testing a population that has a problem looking for a needle in a haystack and then they find these things and they say oh look all these people with autism have it but then when they take it and they study it on the normal population that's neurotypical they see that neurotypical people can carry this genetic um, anomaly and not have the symptoms of autism so it leaves this question mark of how relevant and how significant is it however in our case because everyone that has it has some sort of symptoms it presents a strong case plus not only do we have the microduplication now, now we have this other variant. So it's two things linked to autism. And so it makes a stronger case for us showing that we do have something genetic going on and that that is causing the autism in our kids. So for our boys, now they have two chromosomal um, anomalies that they found. And in the exome test, they also found that I carry the microduplication that my boys have. And the new one that they found, I don't carry. So they suspect that my husband is carrying it. So now we're going to have my husband and my younger two girls test it. But we're not testing the baby yet. Um, we will test him. We're just waiting because it's not urgent. And so we're just taking care of the paperwork right now to get the approvals for my daughters and my husband. And I have the approval now for my daughters. Now we're working on the approval for my husband. And once we have all the paperwork together, we're going to go and do the blood draws and get all that submitted and then hopefully within six weeks we will have the results to know if my girls have these um that will they'll know if they have the new variant that they found on the fifth chromosome but we won't know about the micro duplication we'll have to do another test for that so we're just kind of starting this whole process with them to see what they have and what they don't have but if it comes back that they do, then it'll really help us with them because we've been struggling to get diagnoses for them. And if we can prove that there is a genetic thing going on within the family, then it will give them the autism diagnosis, which will really help my oldest daughter. Um, if you want to know why that would really help her, be sure to check out the video. And I'm going to put in the link above because I will explain the whole story of why this will really help her. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it has been a couple months of appointments and consultations and back and forth and blood tests, but we finally have come to a conclusion that we have these two anomalies between me and my husband. It's coming from both sides, not just one side, and they didn't expect to find it in either of us, and they found something coming from me, and we suspect the other one is coming from my husband, so we're going to find out soon about that and i will keep everyone updated i hope that you gain some value from this video and that if you're going through something like this that this helps provide some insight of things that could be happening if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this mama tribe see you next time bye